Hi everybody, this is Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is a uh, short talk about August and why, why am, do, am I doing a video about August? Well, I think I'm going to do some uh, monthly forecasts as well, besides the weekly ones. And August is just such a special month. Astrologers worldwide have been talking about August since the beginning of the year. We have two eclipses happening, we have a Mercury retrograde happening, we have an Uranus retrograde uh, happening. So much happening in the sky. So I thought it would be good if we could just divide uh, a little time to... Uh, devote a little time to um, just talk about what it is we're facing because this is a pivotal month and it might be a pivotal month for a lot of us of course that depends where those eclipses and especially the one on August 21st in 2855 degrees uh, Leo is in your chart in which house because the house it falls in would be the matters that can change greatly in your life and that brings me to talk a bit about eclipses. Eclipses are times of great change while um, a lunar eclipse talks about an internal change in the subjective viewpoint that I walk with towards the world. What I project from within myself from my personal subjective viewpoint onto the world that inner frame changes and a solar eclipse talks about an external change something that either is, either happens on the outside realm and forces a change in the inside <clears throat> or is brought about by the inner change that has happened and because the inner change occurred there is a transmutation in the outer world as well. In the old uh, Jewish texts it's always written that if you are connected to the source then a lunar eclipse is good for you and if you're not it could be bad. It could be not beneficial because really these times of eclipses are times that we need to acknowledge all these places that these eclipses fall on our natal charts in our lives and attend to them, garden them, make them healthier, make them better, make it so that a positive change can occur in these places in our lives. Because if not, we can experience some strife and changes that are uncomfortable. And of course, this eclipse happens on Donald Trump's natal Mars. Not only on Donald Trump's natal Mars, but also on ben Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, NATO Mars. He has the exact NATO Mars as Donald Trump. That's why they love each other so much. And the exact NATO Mars of the State of Israel. That's already spooky and scary. And my mom's NATO Mars, by the way. But she isn't anything, anything like Donald Trump or Benjamin Netanyahu. She's a good, hippie, cancer girl. She raised me after all. How bad can she be? Said Leo. No, I'm not a Leo, I'm a Taurus. So Self-love. Working on it. Anyway, back to business. So where were we? <laughs> so that eclipse happens on uh, on natal Mars of Benjamin Netanyahu, the state of Israel and Donald Trump. Many astrologers said that he could get assassinated, Trump, I don't know if I'm going that far. I know that this is the same part of the Soros series of eclipses that happens every 18 years, a couple of days, a couple of hours. Uh, so the last one was a 99 and the one before that at 81. And Donald Trump did lose his brother and father a month, a little, a little less than a month before and after the eclipse last time. So we're wondering what's going to happen now. Personally, I thought that some karma is going to reach him, catch up to him, and that things are going to be uncovered from his past that would not allow him to continue his presidency. But we don't know, we're just guessing here, okay? We're just guessing and it will be, and it will be very exciting to see what is going to happen. And of course for the state of Israel this is a time that could 
uh, I mean, when we have an eclipse on our Mars, it's a time that we might need to def defend ourselves, that we might find ourselves in strife, right? So Donald Trump might find himself in a stressed position. Benjamin Netanyahu, same. And he is facing a lot of corruption charges right now. And there's like uh, governmental witnesses and a witness protection pr uh, program that were his former advisors and all sorts of stuff. So that might happen for him. You know, that might burst open. And he's not going to be able to continue his uh, role as prime minister. But still, it's just an educated guess. And the state of Israel might need to defend itself. So it could be a war zone again. It's like a Swiss clock every two and a half years. It's crazy. Could you imagine how it feels like having missiles flowing over your head and hearing the booms shatter like, like you know, having a baby in a situation like this, hearing a siren knowing you don't even have a shelter to go to. And like you won't start running a few hundred meters to a shelter right now with a baby on your arms. It's just it's such a shame, such a shame that people place so much energy in destruction. And this is what this eclipse, these eclipses, the lunar eclipse in August 7, and the eclipse in August 21st are about love, Leo. The eclipse in August 7 is in 15 degrees Leo and the smack in the middle of Leo. And the, 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 the solar eclipse is in 28 degrees of Leo. 28.55 minutes. So it's about love and it's about taking part and it's about acknowledging that we are here not to abuse the natural system, not to be on top of it, but to harmonize it, to be the custodians of that natural system, to make sure that life goes on. This is the Leo Aquarius axis. This is me and my self-love and my role here in this world and the group, the clan, the, the social arena, humanity the world and what does my particular role give to the world so this is a time that if you are a constant gardener and you work for light and love you can be extremely empowered each and every one of you listening to this video right now the world needs us more than it ever did before. This is a time, and it correlates with the movement of the sun into Virgo as well. And, and Mercury being in Virgo and turning retrograde in August 12th for two weeks. Extremely powerful. Mercury retrograde in the ruling sign of Virgo. Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, so it's very strong there. And so it would be very strong in its retrograde as well. And what is Virgo all about? It's about being the gardeners of Eden. It's about fixing the world, like they say in Kabbalah, the tikkun olam. It's about healing the world. It's about giving service. It's about understanding that we are part of a system. And once a chain in that system rots and corrupts, it affects the old chain. It trickles down. And it reminds me of this wonderful... Uh, a story about about uh, um, about the wolves being brought back to Yellowstone, and how the um, I, I'm not sure how it's called something cascading. The, the uh, there's a word for it, but it's the trickle down effect in the in the um, natural pyramid, and how wolves changed how Yellowstone is with the amount of animals it has inside and the, how the rivers flow. And if you want to see the video about it, you can watch it on my, on my professional page. I'll, I'll post it in the remarks for this video as well. It's an amazing thing huh? what 14 wolves did to Yellowstone. So it's about understanding this interconnectedness and this trickle-down effect and that the fact that we are here 
to be the balancers and harmonizers of nature and not the rulers of it. That we are a part of nature and if we try to bend nature to our needs and not bend ourselves to nature's needs, we can get ourselves in trouble. Literally, this is a time of life and death. Because if we're not doing this work, especially now with the square between Pluto and Jupiter that's going to be there up to the middle of August, we can be going through all the darkest, most sinister parts of our personality. All that Plutonian magma and the crevices inside our, our most inner most channels and, and dungeons. The sewage that still is in there is all turbulated upwards by this Jupiter square asking it to be brought onto the light so we could learn from it and expand and grow. And of course Pluto is about power and growing as well. So we could have people on power trips here, on ego trips. If you are not doing the work, this is a time that you could really expand un, um, unsustainably and go out of your balance. But if you are doing the work, this is a time that you are exposed to all the most ugly and darkest parts of your self so they could be cleansed and brought onto the light and you can grow. It's about understanding that we can no longer give the job to other people. We are responsible whether we like it or not. It is up to us whether we like it or not and we need to take our part. So we have the full moon on August 7th. So that's the Jupiter square Pluto that is happening already and will happen up to the uh, uh, up to the middle of the month and then we have full moon lunar eclipse August 7 and uh, in the middle of Leo 15 degrees Leo talked about it we have the Mercury retrograde in Virgo that we talked about in August 12 we have a solar eclipse in August 21st it's a new moon in 28 degrees of Leo 53 uh, minutes and we talked about that as well and then on August 22nd the Sun enters Virgo we talked about that. Happy birthday, all you Virgos. I love you. And on August 25th, I mean, the rest of the month looks beautiful and much easier because uh, Saturn turns direct on August 25th. On August uh, uh, 25th, uh, Venus enters Leo as well. And then on August 27th, Jupiter sextile Saturn. So first of all, <clears throat> all, everything connected with growth and with us facing reality and the need to work with what it is that we have there you know what, what what we have to work with and 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 become more responsible and progress steadily ahead that's been a little bit i mean things have not been stable in the last couple of months but when saturn turns direct again processes of evolution processes of maturement are going to be more steady they're going to be more steady and then that jupiter sextile saturn it's also a very calming and stabilizing effect, both on relationships and on because it's in Libra and, and uh, on work-related issues and ideologies are starting to set in. We already know better the lies and the liars have been uh, exposed. We now know. There's no question anymore. We're much more to the point, so we could progress much faster we go back into streamlining our movement on the road and when Venus hits Leo I mean that's so much fun coming from that melodramatic cancer Venus is so happy to go into Leo oh god I've been home for so long I need to get out and have some fun I need to love that's Venus going into Leo and it's a time for a lot of joie de vivre the fun of life I mean, dinner parties could be amazing, and the people you meet, and people you, you haven't seen uh, for ages, but you love so much, and just enjoying yourself with good food, good people, good company, you know, the zest of life. That's Venus and Leo. And 
and and and yeah, Jupiter sextiles Saturn. We talked about, it. and then on August thirty first, Mercury retrograde enters Leo again. Blah, don't want to talk about it. Not even, you know, it's it's basically it's basically a time that we can we can become a little bit uh, not as direct and not as uh, focused anymore, and and really just don't want to hear anything about anything anymore. We absorbed too much, and now we just need to have some fun. So, work, 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 up to the 21st of August. Uh, inner work, uh, evolutionary work, spiritual work. Do the work that is needed because the world needs you. Thank you for listening. This was the August forecast. And, of course, for private lessons and courses and any question you might have. And, of course, private consultations. Opening your own natal chart would be an honor for me. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. Have a beautiful, productive, positive month. Bye-bye.